Welcome back, slide rule fans. Uh, today I'm going to talk about some more advanced uses of the S scale, or really uh, the common uses of the S scale. Um, I talk about direct reading of signs of angles on the S scale in my, one of my basic slide rule videos. Um, I think that video also covers the T tangent scale and the L uh, logarithm scale. Um, but I'm going to focus here on applications uh, which involve the law of signs. I hinted at that in that video. Um, and really this makes the S scale very powerful. The idea is that, uh, remember from basic geometry, if you take uh, one of the angles of a triangle and divide by the length of the side across from it, that ratio is the same for all three pairs of angles and side lengths um, in the same triangle. Um, but we know the C and the D scale, if you set if you set the slide, then you set this ratio. So, that, so think of the C and the D here being replaced by the S and the D. And when I set that ratio between the S and the D, it also is constant anywhere I set the cursor. So I can use this for solving law of sines proportions. Okay, let's look at this uh, first one. Um, now this, this first, let's, let's imagine that this is unknown, this 21.2. How could I find that? Well, um, I know one of these one of these ratios, the 16 over sine 31. So I set 16 here on the D, okay, and then I set sine 31 on S. So there's 31. Um, then what? All I need to do is find the 43 degrees for the signs I'm reading on the S scale. So here's 40 degrees. Uh, 41, 2, 3. And what do I read down on the D? The D is reading about 21.2, or the length of that side. Okay. Now, difficult thing here is maybe how to get this other side. Um, well, I have this quick sketch of the sine function here. We know it's increasing from 0 to 90, but then is decreasing. And it turns out um, what you should use in place of 106 for angles between 90 and 180 is the supplement of 106, which is 74 degrees. So I haven't moved the slide uh, since setting the 31 degrees and the 16. Uh, so now I'm going to find 74 degrees instead of the 106. There's 70. Uh, 74 about here. 74. There's 70. We're in this range with low resolution. 74 about there. Um, and what I get is about 2.98 or so. Um, of course, on the scale here, it shouldn't be 2.98. It should be 29.8, placing the decimal. Okay. Um, there. We'll come back to why you should use the supplement there um, in a few minutes. Okay, now often it's the case that the triangle you want to solve is a right triangle, and there's a couple tricks to keep in mind for solving right triangles. Uh, the first trick is that um, the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle in a right triangle. Um, so, where is, where is that angle corresponding to the hypotenuse? Well, that's at the index. Uh, sometimes you'll have to use the left index. Uh, so the left or the right index where 90 degrees is on the sine scale. Okay, the second trick is, um, well, you might know one of the angles and say it's across from this side, but you might also be interested in this side. And so this angle you could find uh, by computing 90 degrees minus the other angle. In other words, by finding the complement of the angle. Okay, so if we know one angle but not the other one, we can find it using the complement. But sometimes those complements are marked on the slide rule. Uh, see here, 60 and 30, and 40 and 50. Um, so if they're marked on your slide rule, you don't actually have to compute it. You can just find it on the uh, reverse reading uh, scale, which is marked with the complements. Okay, so let's look at this first triangle. Here's the triangle where the hypotenuse is known. Hypotenuse is length 4.4. I've already found it on the D scale here. 4.4. Now, um, I may have already found the... Uh, let's see. Okay, so I found 4.4 on the D scale. What I want to do is align that with the index. Okay, because the, side, the angle across from a uh, side with length 4.4 is the 90 degree angle. Okay. Now the question is... Uh, how long is this side? 
Well, I should just find 24 degrees on the S. There's 24. And I read back down on the D scale that that's about 1.567, let's call that 179. Okay, now we'll use the second trick here for finding the other angle. Uh, the other angle is across from this angle which is the complement of 24 degrees. So I could either compute the complement, or if my slide roll has a complement marked, I just find the marked complement. Okay, so here's, here's 30 degrees marked in red. Uh, so I'll come back from 30 degrees to about here. Uh, about there, 24 degrees, um, using the red mark for the complement, and I read the uh, result about 4.02. Okay. Now it's worth noting that uh, what I've done here is the same calculation you need to resolve a vector, um, given its angle and its magnitude. So imagine, right uh, here is the vector, right, and your coordinate system is like this. Right, so you've resolved one component and the other component. Okay, so this calculation I just did can also be used to resolve the vectors if you know um, about vectors. Okay, let's look at another example. Uh, here's an example where the hypotenuse is unknown. Okay, so if the hypotenuse is unknown, I'll have to use the other angle side pair first. So let's find the 3.5 on the d scale and then find the 57 degrees on the S scale. Okay. Um, then the question is, uh, what is that hypotenuse length? Well, the hypotenuse should be appearing underneath the index mark here. So move the cursor to the index mark and I read about 41.7. I'm adjusting the magnitude for the problem. Okay. Now what about the other side? Well, the other side corresponds to, again, the complement of the 57. So I'll find the 57 using the red uh, markings. So 55, 56, 57. Okay, and reading the result there, 2, 1, 2, 2, about 2, 2, 7. 22.7. Okay. So, what if I have an unknown angle. Well, one way you could do this is to actually take the 12 and divide by 26, right, opposite over hypotenuse. That should give you the sine of the angle. And then direct read the S scale um, in reverse uh, to compute an arc sine. But um, we could also do this in another way. Well, I know the 2.6, here's 2.5, 2.6 on the D scale, um, using the law of sines. Uh, should appear underneath the index mark on the S scale. Okay, then the question is where is the 1.2? Okay, well there's 1.2. Okay, and that's right underneath angle uh, 25, 26, 27 and a half. So angle theta here is about 27 and a half degrees. Okay. Now, what if I have a triangle like this, um, where the angle that I want isn't opposite uh, the side that I know, besides the hypotenuse, but is actually adjacent to it? Well, we can start in the same way by setting up the 5, 4, 0, finding that on the D scale. 5, 4. Um, and then aligning that with the index mark, because again, the 90 degree angle corresponds to the hypotenuse. Okay, so I found the index mark and align that with the 5, 4. Well then, what do I need to do? Well, I'll find the 310. But if I find the 310, what's going to read on the S scale, which you can see here is 35 degrees, um, is actually this angle here. So this angle here is 35 degrees. But I'm not interested in that angle. I'm interested in the complement of the angle. So I could do one of two things. I could compute the complement manually. 
Uh, or I could read the complement uh, with the red markings here. So here, here's 50 and 60, so it's 55 degrees. The complement of 35 degrees. Let's talk about reference angles for a second. Uh, reference angles are a way to compute uh, the sine of angles in other quadrants based on the sine of angles um, in the first quadrant. So here, see, 70 degrees, 40 degrees, and 10 degrees are all in quadrant 1. Uh, but 110 degrees, 220 degrees, and 350 degrees are all in other quadrants, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, quadrant 4. Um, and remember the trick for reference angles is that you should measure the reference angle between the x-axis and the second ray of your angle. Remember in standard position the first ray is always along the positive x-axis. So say that this angle is originally measured uh, like this, then the reference angle is measured here. Uh, for example, say this is 110, then reference angle is this small angle here, 70 degrees. So these d angles will always be positive and in the first quadrant. You should always measure them uh, without uh, direction. So always measured in positive direction, even though this is like this, whereas this one is going up. You may think you should measure them in a different way, but you always measure as an acute angle between 0 and 90 degrees um, from the second ray to the x-axis. Okay, the trick is you may have to adjust the sine uh, negative or positive of your angle. So these two angles are quadrant 3 and quadrant 4 where the sine um, should be negative instead of positive. Okay. Um, in particular, this first one which is in quadrant 2, we see computing the reference angle uh, is the same as computing the supplement of the angle. See this angle plus this angle should add up to 180 degrees. So if I have something uh, between 90 degrees and 180 degrees, um, then I can compute its sine by computing the sine of the supplement of the angle as I did way back in the first example here uh, for 106 degrees. Okay? Uh, so if you have never seen reference angles before, you can, um, you can look them up on, online. Okay. As a last example here, I want to talk a little bit about the SRT scale, sometimes called the ST scale, depending on your slide roll. Um, the SRT or ST scale um, reads between uh, some smaller angles. You see here, here's angle 0.6 um, and about 5.7 on the right. Um, and this is because in that range, as you can see printed here, um, the signs of those angles are between 0 0.01 and 0 0.1. Whereas on the regular S scale, they're between 0.1 and 1.0. So if you have a really small angle, uh, you might need to use this SRT scale. Um, it's possible, of course, that your angle is even smaller. Um, but the trick with the SRT scale is that uh, actually the sine of a small angle, the radian measure of the angle, and the tangents of the angle are all about the same. Um, but we can, I'm going to do a simple, a couple simple uses here. One is direct reading. Um, so let's align the scale with the D scale for direct reading. Um, then I could find on the SRT scale the 4, representing 4 degrees, right here. And then reading down on the D scale, about the 699, which of course I interpret in the correct range as 0.699, as the sine of 4 degrees. And of course you can read arc signs by reading in reverse. If I set this to, point, uh, to 5 here, that will represent 0.05 on the D scale. And then on the SRT scale, I see that that angle is about 2.86. So reading here on SRT, 2.86. Um, now, uh, degrees of course. Now, the SRT scale is actually just an extended sine scale. Um, another, another interesting way to think about the SRT scale is it's actually just a folded D scale, um, but folded in a different way than the traditional folded scales. That's interesting. You should think about why that is. Um, but if you've never realized, the SRT scale is actually just a folded, a folded D scale. Um, I'll let you put two and two together. Uh, but let's think of the SRT scale as a continuation of the S scale on the left. So here I have the S scale, which goes uh, from angle 90 here down to angle about 5.7. 
And then, right, the SRT scale picks up at that same angle, about 5.7. So the SRT scale, uh, we could put it right here, and it would just continue the S scale. So let's use that to solve this really uh, elongated oblique triangle. I haven't drawn these triangles to scale, so don't try to measure anything, <laughs> okay? Uh, but let's use the law of sine. So I know I have 3 degrees over 25. Let's set that. Where is 3 degrees? It's on SRT. So let's set 25, and over that set 3 degrees on SRT. Now, if my second angle was appearing on SRT, there is no reason to switch to the S scale. The problem is that the second angle, the 10 degrees, is on the S scale. So, what I really want to do is to, to continue along the SRT scale further in this direction, past the 5.7, which is really continuing along the S scale. So, how can I make that happen? Well, I need to do an index swap. So, I'm going to hold the index here with the cursor swap the index so that it can actually read those angles which are greater than 5.7 there on the S scale. So now I've aligned that. Okay, so now I actually have the continuation of the SRT scale sitting there. There's 10. Okay, so I set that to 10 and underneath it I read 8.3 and of course I interpret that as 83. Okay, this has been a quick explanation of the sine scale with a little bonus on the SRT scale. I hope you enjoyed it and good luck with your slide roll.